Here we go. Season three. Get the crew back together. Ugh. Look who we found here. The world's favorite cinnamon roll. <laughs> Adam. Andrew. What's up, man? What is that shirt? What? What are you talking about? This is a great shirt. This is fashion. See, now you got a shirt. Now you got a dark hole of love and stuff. Gross. All right, mac and cheese. Let's go. Mac Let's and this. cheese. Let's go. Welcome back, boys. Today on Worth It, we're back for season three. We're gonna try three different macaroni and cheeses at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Macaroni and cheese. You're supposed to say worth it. Oh, worth it. <laughs> a little rusty here. Kids love mac and cheese. I love mac and cheese. I'm not a kid. You kind of are. We're on our way to Chef Maryland. It's a soul food spot. Expectations? High. Well, let's not delay. Wait, hold oh. up. Okay, you're still rolling. No, it's not. Welcome, I'm Chef Marilyn. Hi. How are you? Welcome. Hello. Today I'm gonna make my macaroni and cheese, and then hopefully you'll be able to sample some of the other food that we have on the line. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. <laughs> How did you get your start in cooking? As a youngster, I didn't cook. I used to think I was too cute to cook. <laughs> I just started cooking at my house and people were coming, everybody wanted plates, and before you know it, I had opened up a restaurant. When we walked into your restaurant, this is the friendliest staff I've ever seen. Well, my roots are Louisiana, and coming out here to California, my parents never wanted us to lose our southern hospitality. I love to make people happy, and if it can be through your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> to have a soul food restaurant, you have to have macaroni and cheese, greens, and yams. My macaroni and cheese, people love it. They go crazy over it. And it's a real simple recipe. You boil the macaroni, and then I use cheddar cheese, and I use Monterey Jack, and then American cheese with canned milk. I'll put about 26 cans just to make it milky and creamy. And then Lowry's. Lowry's is the key. No salt, no pepper, none of that. It's just real simple. And then you put it in the oven and it melts itself. I used to have to melt the cheese and the butter and everything right. else. It takes too long. This way, <laughs> I can keep the mac coming. Keep the mac coming. Keep it coming, <laughs> that's right. I love that. To the Good. first meal of the season. Ooh, that is red. Wow. It is a straight up lollipop. <laughs> How's yours? It's great. I don't want it. Alrighty. Oh yeah. We both got mac and cheese. We both got greens. We got the fried chicken. But I threw in a piece of what? oxtail because I wanted it. I we know. agreed to get the same thing. I know, but agreements are made to be broken. All right, let's eat. Oh. Yeah, you're gonna want to get in there. Crispy, crunchy bite right there. Mmm. It's lightly overcooked right there on the edge. Worth it, season three. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Dreamy. It is dreamy. Is creamy? That's dreamy. Oh, oh, oh. There's a lot of different cheeses happening in here. And if you look inside here, look at that. What the is that? The butter and the cheese melted on the interior of the macaroni. The, I love the slightly overdone cheese parts. That's my favorite. It's all about that crusty cheese interplaying with the creamy cheese. Boop. Bloom. Oh. Oh. It's really mac and cheese's job to play second fiddle to a lot of foods. I think everything's playing second fiddle to this mac and cheese today. Really? Yeah. I can't touch Chef Marilyn, even though she did give me a hug. And she rubbed my belly. <laughs> I don't know where her recipes came from. She said God. I believe it. Chef Marilyn keeping it tight in the kitchen. Boom! Banana pudding. Ah. Wow. Chef Marilyn's. My soul is satisfied. My favorite part was watching her hack open 26 cans of <laughs> milk. Mac and cheese fact! Look that factoroni and cheese. Craft box mac and cheese came out in 1937 during the Great Depression. One box of mac and cheese can serve up to four people. Not to mention each box was 19 cents. And Wait, hold on, where am I going? All right, so we're on our way now to the Little Jewel of New Orleans, which is in the heart of Chinatown here in Los Angeles. So hold on to your horses because Yankee Doodle, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
This is the Little Jewel of New Orleans. We specialize in cuisine of New Orleans, Louisiana, my hometown. Our business model is sort of the old style bodegas where you would have a grocery and then also a kitchen that would cook some of the same stuff that was available at the shops. Today we're gonna to have something from our hot plates, our special menu, which is a Cromac and Cheese Deluxe. It's a cheesy Cromac, not so much a macaroni and cheese, but a rotini pasta. It's done in a cheese sauce. Of course, you're gonna start off with a lot of sauteed garlic, onion, Creole seasonings, there's heavy cream, many cheeses. We like to impart the crawfish tails blend it into the sauce. And this is sauteed slow and low for a long time period. Garnished with red onions, lots of hot sauce, lots of cheese. We try to get as zesty as possible. That would be the word that I would put here. We make our own in-house smoked andouille sausage. We grill that and it's topped with blackened shrimp. So this is a very rich dish that almost always people feel guilty about finishing, but <laughs> somehow do. So we got these root beers, which you can get by just walking over to a case, picking them out, and then popping a bottle cap off the wall. Root beer is delightful and underrated. An observation for you. Guess what we got here? Root, root beer. beer. Made with pure Louisiana cane sugar. And what do we have here? Crappies. Louisiana original recipe hot sauce. Yes, we are in a Louisiana themed <laughs> restaurant. Can we start? Let's go. Oh, I can smell the cayenne really well. And the milk. <laughs> That's not an ingredient to get excited about. Oh, the milk. <laughs> you want to get some mac and cheese this weekend? I'm craving some milk. Mmm. You all ready for this? Oh, sh That is some next level mac. It's less creamy and more like saucy. There are so <laughs> many flavors going on right now. Probably the most prominent one is the hot sauce. It's instantly biting through the heaviness of that cheese sauce. This is zesty as Chef Marilyn's, my soul was satisfied yes. here. My soul is flirting with the devil. Exactly, I feel like a sinner eating this. I think I do too. <laughs> In a little way, it reminds me of Cincinnati Skyline Chili. It's spaghetti, chili cheese with onions on top. Yeah, that's, you nailed it. This could actually be kicked up a little bit for me. Go for it. No. This could actually be good. <laughs> no, it couldn't. No. It could never be good. I you... swear to God. Okay. Scrumptious, right? You guys ate a lot of this. I very much enjoyed that macaroni and cheese. Me too, man. Me too. Mac and cheese attack back! This better not be cheesy. The world record for the largest macaroni and cheese. How big do you think it was? I'm going with one million pounds. A million pounds. A million pounds. Okay, you're wrong. One pound! This isn't the price is right. <laughs> the largest macaroni and cheese ever was in New Orleans, Louisiana in 2010, and it weighed 2,469 pounds. Not bad, but why? Well, if you love something, the best way to represent that love is to amass a lot of it. So you love your girlfriend, right? That I do very much. So you just need to get the largest amount of your girlfriend. <laughs> Great, so where are we going now? We are going to Barton G's. This truffle. Oh boy. I'm executive chef Attila Balak here at Barton G in Los Angeles. And today we're gonna make a truffled lobster macaroni and cheese in a five pound lobster. Inside a lobster. Stuff to the gills, no pun intended. Barton is an event planner extraordinaire and basically his vision is just pushing the bounds of imagination with every way that we present food. It's gonna serve about two to four people at about $195. You asked me to pay that much money for mac and cheese, my immediate response would be no, uh, no way. But <laughs> okay. you, know, you got truffle and so we lobster. Got a, we got so a that's... five pound main lobster poached in an aromatic broth right here in the house. We're gonna use a power tool to carve out two sides and directly down the back side of the lobster to kind of open that up like a hatch and remove all the delicious and succulent meat from the inside of there. We use Maine lobsters here. We just noticed that, you know, they have an inherent sweetness to them and to us it's pretty much the standard in quality. And then we're gonna fold in a really nice creamy and decadent cheese sauce with cave-aged Gruyere, a beautiful Vermont cheddar, and then to that we add nice aged parm and cotilla cheese for like a bite of salinity. Add the lobster meat back in there. We're gonna put a heap of preserved truffles in there, stuff it 
all right back in, and we're gonna coat it with some brown butter breadcrumbs, some added cheese, bake it, and then shower it in a coating mm. of Paragord truffles, like the finest the market can get, pretty much. When you put it that way, yeah. Yes. FYI, this is a virgin cocktail, so no alcohol. I'm driving, but you, my friend. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is our diamonds are forever cocktail. What? Jealous? Boom. Look at that. Cheers, my friend. Monkey time. Mm. I'm kind of into it. You know? <laughs> cool. Like, you think about this monstrosity that you're dropping 200 bucks for. You're not just getting dinner, you're getting dinner and a show. What I love about the presentation is that it's served on a baking sheet. You have this extravagant thing and the best way to eat it is just on the thing that cooked it. And that's fun, that's fun. <laughs> should we just go? Yeah, we should. Oh! Look at that. The trifecta. This is insane. What are we doing? I don't know what you're doing. Season two. Season three. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent noodle shape. One of my favorite <laughs> noodle shapes. This corkscrew is the perfect cheese trap. You just ate lobster I you know. ate truffle and you're focused on the macaroni aspect. This is a macaroni and cheese episode. I'm gonna focus on the macaroni. This is the most intense dish I've maybe ever eaten. Although lobster is not that strong of a flavor, mm -hmm. but then the truffle, it's like somebody's just like throwing grenades in my mouth of joy. The mac and cheese is making me... Farty? No. <laughs> I'm a little bit lactose intolerant. I don't know what I say. It's been a long day. Tasty? Oh. Wow. That was an insane amount of truffle. I'm more interested in the cheese, honestly. Where's he getting that cheese? So, Andrew, yeah. which mac and cheese was the most worth it at its given price? Barton cheese was not as ridiculous as I thought it would be. You are getting a very fanciful experience. So, Barton cheese, you're worth it winner? No. Little Jewel is my worth it winner. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. It was a crazy tasting mac and cheese. Barton cheese, for what you're getting, it's actually a value. It's crazy to say that. But you're getting a value. That lobster dish feeds four, maybe five, maybe six. I think you could stretch it. It is that rich. It's huge. Little Jewel, the Andouille sausage. And doing it for you? Doing it for me. My worth of winner is Chef Marilyn. You're getting not only the great value, but the hospitality, the love. You're getting Chef Marilyn. Adam, which one would you choose? All right, that's it for episode one. We got nine hot, some cold. Episodes coming right at you. We may be going to different countries this time around. The down under. <laughs> and then to the Japan. <laughs> All right, this is stupid. Let's cut. No. Nope. This isn't going to make it in the video. Thanks, Thanks for watching. If you want more Worth It content, we've actually got a whole brand new spin-off show called Worth It Lifestyle. It's on BuzzFeed Blue right now. See you there. Oh, yes!